All right, welcome to my first video in a series where I showcase my Houdini systems. In these videos, I'll be going over separate sections of the system and giving a showcase of the iterations I made, a bit of in-depth um, explanation on how they work and why I maybe went to next iterations. So in this video, I'll be going over the road generation system. So let's get started. Um, what you see here is my first iteration of the road system. It uses a poly sweep node, which takes a cross section, which you can see here in the viewport right now. Let's make that a bit bigger. So you can see here, we have our road cross section and it takes a input curve, which right now is this corner piece. Um, the reason I like this is because it has a lot of controllability, so in here I can adjust the overall width of the driveway, change the sidewalk height, as well as change the width of the sidewalk. Only problem with this is it does not self-collide, so when I change the input curve here to a different one, you can see here that we're starting to get a problem. A bunch of polygons clipping, and that's not what you want. Uh, that's why I went on to a second iteration, which as you can see, let's just go to the control output again, which you can see it kind of fixes the problem. Oh, upside down. So it fuses in on itself. Now this is the poly expand node, and I chose it because it is a very nice node for making no roads. So let's go back to the, f the previous test geometry. So here we go. And as you can see, it looks pretty nice. Um, to me, the only problem is that in the middle here, you can see there's a very big polygon that's left. Um, that makes a problem because if you have two big polygons that aren't triangulated correctly, texturing becomes very hard, especially in a procedural system. So I went on to another iteration, which is here. Not much changed here, but I did manage to gain a bit more control. So now I was also able to select this big polygon. So in here you can see, I select a big polygon and subdivide it with a divide node, basically making squares everywhere. Now this is pretty useful uh, because now I can select the middle polygon and come up with that in the second version. But in here, I just get a little bit more controllability over what I'm doing. Um, although this doesn't fully work yet, so I moved on to another setup which is here. Now, this is the only thing I did in this iteration. I only made a test for intersections. And as you can see, it works pretty well. It gives a very neatly subdivided mesh, but it follows the points, amount of points too much. And I did not know how to select the outer edges. So if I go to the um, beveling system or the extruding part, you can see that everything gets extruded and it makes a mess out of it and here it just basically breaks. So I had to fix that, which I did in V5. So here we start off with a circle and a intersecting section. And as you can see it works pretty neatly. And here you can also see that it works. I select the parts according um, to a group. This group is made based on these points. So I group the original curve points and then based on that I manage to also get the sides of it. So this works pretty well. That's what I thought at first. Um, when you input a 3D curve 
it basically breaks the system. So as you can see here, I inputted a 3D curve and it's why it's called the PolyExpand 2D. It does not work in 3D, sadly enough. So I had to move on to a new iteration, which I did in V6. So in here we have a intersecting curve. Right now it is in 2D because uh, the intersections are solved in 2D. So when I look here, you can see we've got, let me see how many curves again. We've got two curves, as you can see by the primitive numbers in here. And with this script section, I intersect them. So the points you can see on screen now, a bit more highlighted with the circles. As you can see here, these are the intersection points. And at the end of the system, a neatly intersected road comes out. This will also work in 3D since um, the sweep, since I'm using a sweep node. And a sweep node will work in pretty much any circumstances. Only problem right now is that I did not figure out how to get the intersection points to a 3D position because this would be a three dimensional curve, only it would be flattened first before it would be intersected. Now going through this system, going all the way up first, we start off with the curve itself and I carve it. And what that does is beforehand, we only have two primitives, which is Houdini's form of polygons. And then we carve it, which means that every line segment gets a primitive. Using these primitives, I use a intersection script. It's not very visible here. Ah, here it is. Let's turn off those primitives. So I use the intersection script to find the intersections. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And when we look at the amount of points, or circles in this case, we do actually have six. So that's six circles for six intersections. When I have those circles, I go into a for loop. Let me see. And for each time I loop, I take one circle. So that's visible here. We've got all the circles, but right now I'm only looping over one. So this is one circle and it gets intersected with the curve. I had to do this in a for loop because the curve sec node, which I'm using to intersect the curves, can only use two as an input. It cannot use more than that. So I just had to loop over all those curves as well as circles. Not that much of a problem. In here, I delete the intersection parts because they are not necessary anymore. And after that, I sweep. So here I basically adjust some normals, delete redundant points, and sweep. So using these as target curves, just go behind this. And here I'm already starting to fuse the points. As you can see, these points beforehand, they were not merged, they were all loose, but here I'm merging them. So, um, of course, there's a bunch of holes now in the geometry that I don't want there. So, again, using the, per the points from the intersection we made earlier, I toss them into a for loop. And each time I loop over a different point. So, that happens here. So, right now, I'm using this point. I copy the sphere on top of it, which is here, and using a group. I group only the points of this intersection, which I then join together. So it becomes a polygon. So through this process, we get a very nice polygon, which is then output to the deleting of attributes because there were some unnecessary things going on there. This section here, I'm fixing the normals because they were doing quite weird stuff. They were not pointing the right way and here I'm decorating it. So I'm extruding it up and out and adding some bevels to the edges so it's not 
too edgy. Now, a problem I sometimes had was that uh, a section of the intersections would extend out into a very big polygon. Now, to fix this, I used a measure node, which is set to area, so they'll look at the area of a polygon, and I delete it if the area is too big. How do I know if it's too big? Well, all these polygons are all a certain size and they will never be bigger than that size. So if it's bigger, then it means that there's an error in the system, which is the sixth iteration. Now up here, you probably saw there's a bunch more nodes. These are just all sorts of tests though, because the intersections didn't work in the beginning. And this is something I use in V7. So let's go to the seventh iteration, which is using Oh dear, there we go. It is using the actual road curves. So the curves you see here are the curves I used for testing. And these ones are the ones taken from the type distinction system, uh, which I'll be showcasing later. And together with the terrain, so let's just input it and have a look at it. loading for a second doing the VDB stuff which is a big flaw in this system but I'll get at that later now nothing much changed inside of the system except for that instead of circles I now use spheres for intersection because we changed from 2d to 3d so I had to solve that now um, the points are still made in a 2d environment so I flat the curves by setting their Y skill to 0 and I intersect them, as you can see here. And what I do then is I ray them on top of the original curves. So the points are rayed on top of the curves. So here we've got the points. Let's go up here. Here we have the curves with height elevation. And then here I ray the points on top of the curves. That information is then used for making those spheres and everything else is pretty much the same except for the filling of the holes because in certain scenarios there is more than four points on the intersection I have not yet been able to solve that so as you can see here there sometimes are some errors so when I go to the decorating stuff which hasn't changed at all so here I've got the decoration as you can see it's not looking very nice. There's a very big error going on here. Otherwise though, it's working pretty decent, I would say. Also stuff like this with a height change that's too big. But again, that's stuff I have to change. What you could see earlier though was also the tunnels. So here we have the normal roads, tunnels, that are actually going through the terrain. And the terrain looks very much different from its original form so that's not anymore very neatly subdivided now the polygons are very really differently distributed so up here is where I make the tunnels which is not a very complicated way what I do is I take a cross section I sweep and cap it so here we have intersection geometry I turn it into a VDB which basically means that it's turned into a volume or voxels I think it was and then here I combine the two because the terrain also is turned into a volume and here I merge them or I use a boolean. So as you can see here, there's a hole in the terrain. And after some optimizing, this comes out. Now I could optimize this more, but I found that when uh, using more optimization options, I lost a lot of the detail of the geometry and I did not want that. So I'm still looking for a solution for this, but for now it'll have to be done with just a lot of primitives and, poly and uh, points, which is brings together the final result we can see here. Now after this I made another iteration, which is the eighth iteration, and this again uses um, the poly expand node on a suggestion from Zoran. Uh, what he said earlier, you saw me using the ray node to ray certain parts, ray the points, the intersection points on top 
of the curves and here I'm basing use want to use the ray node to ray these road sections on top of the terrain. So I still have the intersection which is let me see here. So here we go. I still have these intersection parts. Let me see, can I see the points? Yes I can. Here they are. So we still have those intersection points, but instead of making them into spheres or circles, I now make them into lines to intersect the road curve. Now this has some flaws, because if this line crosses uh, a road curve, it will intersect it once more, which is not desirable, but something I'll have to fix. And here again, the poly expand node does its job now there is a lot of polygons so when looking at the count of polygons this uh, poly expand makes we're looking at a count of yeah 5700 and that's just a base geometry so that's a lot that's not desirable for roads since this is a minimum amount this is just a couple of test curves uh, in the real in the real system there's going to be a lot more so what I've gone through now is just optimizing. So as you can see, it's not as dense anymore. All these sections are now clear. And when we open up our geometry spreadsheet, we can see that we only have 1300, which is already a very big optimization. I'll be doing some more optimizing in the future since this system is not finished yet, but for now it is. So, that was the road generation section. Uh, after this I'll do the type distinction system going over how I make those very neatly colored curves you can see here. So stay tuned for that, it'll be in the same folder as this video. So thank you for watching and till the next video.